Okay. Welcome everyone to the first video conference in theater and telepresence. This event takes part of the performing arts network in Latin America. The first event you can remember uh, of network inauguration was the last year with the conference of Justin Trigger from New World Symphony in Miami Beach. Since then, we have organized a lot of meetings and projects. For example, recently, the coverage in Arts Electronica in Linz and the presentation of Mure project in Kunsthistorisch Museum in Vienna with the support of Aconet and the partnership and organization of Renate Kreil, member of the Performing Art Networks, as well as the invited today, uh, Tom Gorgman and uh, Tina Sirja. Uh, they are our speaker today. Thank you so much for your participation. Tom Gorman is in University of Coventry, England. Tina Siria is in University of Tampere, Finland. Uh, and also Miko Kanningen uh, is part of the group. For us, it's an honor to uh, count with us, uh, with them, for the first meeting in theater and telepresence. Uh, you have got your amazing biographies. They are a strong reference in the topic. It's a pleasure for us, your participation. Thank you so much again. Welcome and go ahead. Thank you very much. I'm just going to attempt to share my screen a little bit and then we'll show a video. So um, this is hopefully all of this technology will work, which is ironic since we work with technology. So um, <laughs> this is a joint project uh, that is now going into its fourth year. Uh, between the Coventry University Theatre Department and the University of Tampere uh, Theatre Department. But I think first, if, if we go to the first film, uh, Dalma, if that's okay, and, um, and we'll just play the first film and hopefully that will give you a clue as to what it is we're doing. And actually, I was all, all the time, I was waiting like, hey, they're going to jump in here through that screen yeah. like any moment now, yeah, any yeah. day, and they're going <laughs> to run and end up here. Because I've done camera work, but this wasn't quite it, because <laughs> the situation was quite like a theater scene, or we were doing a, a scene from Career Lanes. We did it as a theater piece, kind of. But it wasn't camera acting because we, because it was stage acting. We had a sense of feeling that these English students and teachers were with us here in Tampere during the whole week. But there were, and this is the, I think the main point, that uh, we were really having actual international collaborative workshop on Shakespeare and drama. Every day, something very different was happening. Every day we were learning something. Uh, we've just chatted this morning again, and, and one of the things we said um, was that we really felt we were only getting to grips with it by the very last day. That um, we really were only discovering what it could do by the end of the two-week session. We get much further than I thought. Uh, so, yeah, that was surprising for me anyway. I, I didn't expect that we could uh, go so so far already in, in one week. So we really felt that we met personally and during the virtual lessons that we were in the same room and the distance was smaller and smaller. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, that, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'll just go back to this. Hopefully that played for everyone and it made some sense. Uh, we have a little bit more footage to come later. So that was some footage from the very first version of this project, which was called Coriolanus Online. And at that point, that was all it was called. It, it's now called Immersive Telepresence in Theatre. We really didn't think, you know, it, it was meant to be a one-off, but it's, it's grown. It began as uh, an oil project, which is online international learning, uh, which is a scheme that uh, Coventry University is very keen on in terms of uh, being quite an international university. And, and our, our outlook is very international. And it's very important for us, for students, to get some experience of, of working abroad and not just in the UK. And uh, our dean had met Tina at a conference in... And actually, I'll let Tina tell the story because it involves Tina's <laughs> research. So, yeah. Yes, hello, everyone. Yes, I, I met uh, Mark Evans, who was uh, dean in, at that time in, in Coventry University. And I was giving a lecture about uh, acting in a foreign language, and he heard that and... and, and uh, suggested that we should work together, which I was very happy about. So acting in a foreign language is, uh, is a long-running research and pedagogical project, which has been gone in in program um, in theater arts where I work in, in the University of Tampere. Uh, we've done it since 1995. And the idea is that uh, the actor students act uh, in a language that they they are not familiar with so we've done plays in in italian and chinese and russian and so on and um, the the idea of um of this uh, work is actually that when the symbolic significance of the words lose its strength, then the the corp corporeal level of of meaning and um, meaning of the language actually, and and the material and musical resonant quality of of the voice, they get actuated, and so um, and when when uh, speech and voice are understood as something material, uh, which can be sensed and actually touched, their their function starts to be a bit different than just to to convey meaning but also but to be really a um, means of of interacting uh with each other which is with each other in in an embodied uh connection and uh so when we agreed to start to work uh with shakespeare uh our students in Finland, they know English, but of course, Shakespeare's language is uh, very different. And in a way, it's also a foreign language to English actor students because uh, it's very old English. So we kind of thought that uh, they are in the equal situation, well, almost equal situations uh, when we work with Shakespeare's language. Yeah, and yeah. I and I should add that that Shakespeare was the Finns' idea, not uh, coming from the English side. Um, this initially was, I was sent over to Finland to arrange a, a Skype lecture from Tina, uh, but they made the mistake of sending me to Finland. Um, and what happens when people meet? They have lunch. They talk about theatre. They talk about what they're interested in. And the Finnish group are very interested in Shakespeare, and I'm very interested in directing Shakespeare. I've been directing Shakespeare for years. Uh, it seemed like a wonderful challenge, but it also was a challenge. And it was also Shakespeare's 400th, uh, the 400th anniversary of his death, uh, the year in which we were going to look at Coriolanus. And Miko, who's not with us tonight because he's, he's actually directing a play, uh, and Miko came up with the idea of Coriolanus, and uh, there were political reasons for this, because uh, the play Coriolanus is about a Roman general who 
is a great warrior but a terrible politician and he has a very unfortunate uh, relationship between his brain and his mouth in that he tends to say really unpleasant and uncomfortable things and at that point we were thinking of Donald Trump who we thought would never really become president but was kind of interesting in his interaction with Twitter and uh, the way he tweets. Little did we know many years later those tweets would still be happening. And we became fascinated by the idea of the citizen in the digital age. Who is the mob now? Uh, who are the mob now that we're all online? But we ran into our first problem in that although we love technology, none of the three of us are, are technologists. We're theater directors, we're actor trainers. Um, and we knew we had to work online, and we we know what to do in our normal day jobs in terms of dealing with these scenes, but we didn't have a digital solution yet. And I just like this quote, which is actually from a, a business book that I discovered, that says, the best tool ever invented for improving communication is the table. Online tools aren't better than face-to-face -face contact, they're just better than nothing. And ultimately, human beings getting together and making art is the, the ultimate way of doing this. Uh, online tools are another way of doing it. So, so we had these challenges. We wanted to explore the scene. We wanted to explore the scene practically. Um, and we're 1,125 miles apart. Um, it's expensive to send students for a few weeks to do a series of workshops. It's it's environmentally not very good. Um, we have to put students in hotels. We have to fly them over. We have to feed them. Um, so we needed some way of working that we, we didn't really know. So we, we met in June, and by December, we were still trying to work out how to do it. And we looked at um, Skype. We looked at Google Hangouts. We looked at very traditional business conferencing. Uh, but the problem with it, as, as you see tonight when we're talking, is the full body can't be viewed, and there's no sense of eye contact. Um, and so it's very difficult for actors to act when they're just a head on the screen. Um, and then a colleague of mine, Geoff Chafer, who'd been working with a computer program called Second Life, uh, and had been working with the artist Stellark, who I understand gave a talk in August on, on, uh, through Ania uh, Culturale. Um, and they had created a room in the Herbert Art Gallery where they had a virtual room and an actual room, and the design of the actual room mirrored the virtual room. And someone would go in to the real room, and their avatar would appear on the screen in the virtual room, and they could interact with these computerized characters. And um, we thought that would be really interesting if it could be two identical rooms, but with live actors in. So we began to look at a way of, of making this happen. And uh, so we used, this is a little diagram of the setup that we used. Uh, we used a rear projection screen um, we used a polycom because that is kind of readily available. Most universities will have a polycom or a Cisco or H323 Tom? video conferencing. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Uh, yeah. This moment, we can't uh, see the presentation. Oh. Hang on. Ah. I didn't press a button. Ah, here we are. Can we see the presentation now? I didn't press share screen. <laughs> yeah, the irony of working. Can everybody see it now? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay, lovely. Uh, this is a diagram of, of what we ended up building. Um, it's a rear projection screen. Uh, we have a projector with a, a very bright projector with a short throw lens. Um, we have the speakers behind the screen so that the, the voice appears to be coming from the actor. Um, and we have a camera in front of the screen and the microphones in front of the screen. And we use conventional stage flats to mask off the space so that all of the technology is hidden behind the screen. 
except the camera. And um, we were in a wind tunnel originally, so the Coventry people, because we really didn't know what we were doing, um, we couldn't really find a room to work in. So the only room we could find uh, was a disused wind tunnel that was used for testing aircraft engines, which was actually very echoey. It had a lot of echo in it. And we didn't know how important echo and latency would be at that time, because again, we, we were new to this kind of situation. We didn't really know how we were going to teach in this space because uh, no one had ever done it before. And so we couldn't find a guidebook. We couldn't find uh, any exercises that work when you have, I believe it was it 13 actors in Tampere, Tina? Yes. And we had 20? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So we, we had 13 in Tampere and we had um, 20 in Coventry. Um, we drew lines on the ground to show the actors when they were in shot. We drew little boxes on the ground to kind of indicate where characters should stand. We, we actually abandoned that idea really quickly as well. And we waited to see what would happen. And uh, one of the ph phenomena we discovered is that the camera, if placed carefully, can give the illusion of eye contact. Um, the, uh, if the camera and the projector are lined up correctly on both sides, and if the lighting is right, and if the sound is balanced, you can give the impression that this is a shared space. I think there's a lovely quote from Santory, uh, who was one of the Finnish students who worked with us in King Lear. He said, we all know how it works, but your brain is just stupid enough to trick you into believing that those people are actually there. Um, we made a mistake at the start. We, we pretended the camera wasn't there. We told the students to ignore the camera, um, which limited the actors, and so did the lines on the ground. And I noticed, especially in the first few days of rehearsal, that um, actors were feeling, actors seemed to be feeling very restricted. We, we had um, some Finnish folk dancing lessons with Samuel Lee Nordberg. Uh, we attempted to play some workshop games, and, and they actually went really well. It was when we came to the scene work, it, it seemed to be very mechanical, and I, I think we were restricting uh, the actors slightly. But then we let them play with the camera and with the sound, and this is something that we've explored more and more and more as we've moved into further versions of this project. Uh, to play with scale, and, and I'll show you uh, some footage in a little minute of, of actors playing with this. Um, and the first version was really uh, a series of discoveries. We used um, the course round for two weeks. We had lectures because um, it's, it was an academic course as well. We wanted the students to understand why we were doing Shakespeare. Uh, I personally, our students, we wanted to know about Finnish theatre, so we had a, a lecture on Finnish theatre history. Uh, Tina gave a lecture about uh, her research and acting in a foreign language because we worked in a little bit of Finnish the first time round and uh, mainly in English, but we did a little bit of... Uh, Coventry students did a little bit of acting in a foreign language with that. Um, the tutors are in both spaces as well. It's it's not a master class, so it's not being delivered uh, from one side. Uh, it, it is a teamwork. There are three of us, sometimes four of us, working in both spaces at the same time. This is very useful in terms of translation, not just translation of what words mean, but cultural references, because even, even in Western Europe, there are references which we can use as a shortcut in the UK, which don't translate to uh, Finland. And similarly, um, I remember Miko being able to talk to some of the students about the way soldiers stood, which made more sense to the Finnish students than to our students. And we experimented every morning in the space. We really tried to push what, would, what could be done in the space. And again, I'll be showing you from King Lear when we got more experimental with that. And we told the students that um, you're not really sharing the same space. This is 
you know, you're not in the same room, you're talking via technology, which had the very paradoxical effect of making the technology invisible. We thought acknowledging the technology would make it, um, they would uh, become very much aware of the technology. But the minute we told them that the camera is there and the microphones are there, and when they get closer to the camera, they get bigger. When they talk into the microphone, they get louder. Uh, but actually, that seemed to make the interface vanish, and that's something we're still quite curious about. Um, and for the second version, which I'll just queue up a film in a minute, we became very, very interested in uh, because after we were it, the first version was very successful and very exciting, and we felt we're only just starting to discover how to use the system. So we went for a second version for King Lear, and we really wanted to develop uh, the pedagogy uh, and how we use the space and uh, lessons we'd learned about networking and latency and echo uh, that we encountered for the very first time. At this point as well, we'd also um, joined with Network Performing Arts and got lots of really, really valuable advice from people who've been doing this for years, like Justin Trieger. Uh, from New World Symphony, from uh, Sven uh, over in the Czech Republic, and in terms of uh, sound engineering from our colleagues at the Danish College of Music. So we discovered that there, were, there was a network of people out there who had been working in very different ways with music and with dance, and so we weren't alone. And the question we looked at was, how do we create the real world in the digital world? So we'll show you a little bit of King Lear now, and then we'll talk about that. So, Delma, can you queue up the second film? And I'll stop sharing the screen. OK. It's a Friday. Yeah, I know. We don't need to work the whole weekend. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 We think that's just like we're sacking. That's quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They are laughing at me because I'm coming closer. <laughs> I just want to see you. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is going to be a really odd experience for you. I've, I've done this last year, so this is going to be really strange, but hopefully yeah. you really enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, and especially when we get to sing together, so that will be really interesting when we can yeah. combine this really big choir together. Well, I was planning yeah. to do that. And then you start to rock yourself forward and backwards. And try to... Balance yourself. Try to find the balance of today. It's okay if it was something different yesterday, but the balance of today. And quite fast you can notice that you have to keep your knees a little bit bent. <laughs> Me a 
and the other arm goes back to the floor and stay there. <coughs> and think of letting every in-breath lengthening gently the spine and maybe the out-breath. We should now spend, we're going to spend approximately an hour uh, doing some kind of exercises with our body and mind. And every time thought emerges, take it. Is it about coffee or tea or that I'm bored or anything? Take the thought and pass it along. Imagine the ball. Lift it with your back. Here. Keep it there a little bit. It's a heavy ball. I feel like we should be like, like, yeah. that we can't. Yeah, it's just using that, you know, the eye contact is so difficult because yeah. I know it's every possibility to get any eye contact. Yeah, when, when you look into the camera, you're looking straight into the camera. So when, oh, when, when yeah. she looks, <laughs> see, if I look there, I'm looking at you. Yeah. And if you look yeah. there, you're looking yeah. at me. You look there. So I mean, yeah. I, I don't think, don't be afraid of, like almost like trying to touch yeah. the screen, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and see what happens. Should we do this one yeah. more time and then we'll swap over yeah. you guys? And we'll yeah. As well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> To no more will I give place or notice. I gave you all, and in good time you gave it. Made you my guardian, my depositories. But let a reservation to be followed of such a number. What must I come to you with five and twenty, Regan? Said you so. And speak it again, my lord. No more with me now. I think Goneril stays until she gets her prize. I think you have to stay up until you get your prize. Uh, so oh, I think, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you stay until you get given your bit of land. Uh, Goneril is saying her line, like, behind me. Or, uh, yeah, but I mean, we're going to move all this around once we get to Talaka. We, we know you're there. We know you're there. We'll see okay. you later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am made of the self-same metal that my sister is and prize me at her worth. In my true heart, I find she names my very deed of love. Only, she comes too short. Do not laugh at me. For as I am a man, I think this lady to be my child. Cordelia? And so I am. I am. Your tears wet. Yes, faith. I pray we not. If you have poison for me, I will drink it. Thank you. So that I'll go back to the presentation. Um. So, Tina, do you want to say a, a little bit about um, King Lear and, and what we discovered in it? Hello, hello? Is anybody there? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, in this image, um, there is Cordelia um, interacting with uh, her mentally... Uh, disturbed father and um, they the problem here was of course that they the scene is intimate they and and the students had problem with you know because of course there is not uh, the possibility for the immediate real physical 
concrete touch. So they had to find out other ways of doing it. And so there are actually, when, when you can't really touch, then uh, there are other sensory means in a way to do that. And one is uh, voice, as I was already addressed, addressing. So um, voice is actually touching, literally touching, because uh, the air waves the, uh, move uh, the eardrum, uh, the membrane in the, in the eardrum. And uh, the other means is a vision. Um, so you can touch the other with, with your eye. For example, here, we, um, when uh, the image of Cordelia was, uh, was in, enlarged, uh, it actually created this, um, this uh, sensation of intimacy. Because, you know, uh, like a close-up in a film. So uh, when you get so close, nobody... Uh, you don't uh, let people come so close to you if they are uh, not, you know, if you don't have a intimate close contact with them. So we we use that um, that close up image to to create that that sense there. So um, they kind of uh, combined stage acting and uh, film acting in a way in this in this scene so because there is not the possibility of uh, touch uh, between skin membranes so the the screen was like a second uh, skin for them uh, so they which they touched with their voices and which with their eyes yeah i mean we we discovered that um it is a conventional rehearsal to a certain degree in that we haven't had to really relearn um, how we direct, how we workshop, how we, um, how we create a piece of theatre. But there is this very curious blend between film acting and stage acting. And in a, in, in a way, because the camera doesn't move, the camera, as you can see in that photograph, sits on a stand. Uh, the actors have to become their own cameramen and women. So they uh, line up shots, they use scale, they use size. Uh, you notice in a previous scene, actors standing on chairs. Uh, that was a little experiment where they wanted to stand on chairs because they thought it would make them look bigger. But of course, in order to be fully in shot, they had to stand further back, which of course made them look smaller. But we, we let these experiments happen. Um, I mean, this room is, uh, and these rehearsals are an experiment. We now make students and, and actors very much aware that no one has the solution when we walk into this room, that this is a room in which we are all going to solve a problem together. We're all going to try and make theater in this very strange way. The, the screen can be kind of metaphorical. Um, with King Lear, we, we actually performed live. So uh, the Coventry students traveled to Finland, and then we had a week of live rehearsals, and we staged uh, uh, scenes from King Lear in a very conventional sense. Uh, we, we staged it in, in a uh, Talaka theater. Um, and we had one week rehearsal because we were very interested, and we still are interested in how much can be accomplished in the digital world to really shorten uh, the live rehearsal, to kind of shorten the amount of time you're paying for an hotel, the amount of time you're, you're feeding actors. Uh, everybody goes home to their own houses at night after these rehearsals. Everybody has relatively normal work hours. You, you eat food in your own house, but you are working internationally. You are uh, working across the world. Um, but you, you're, you're going into your own place of work and actually in, into your own drama studios, which I think is very psychologically important for these students as well. These are spaces in both countries where the students work every day. Uh, just all of a sudden, their scene partners are in another country. But what we kind of use to enhance the experience is this program called Adobe Connect. And... Um, 
we used it initially for lectures uh, because it's a very good way of, of presenting online lectures. You can share keynotes, people can have polls, they can raise questions, you can enable webcams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it works on mobile phones and tablets and PCs and, and MacBooks. Uh, and we also gave each group their own rehearsal room because we needed the actors to learn their lines and rehearse with each other. Every group has a very limited amount of time in the big room. And we needed a space for them to develop the work. But we dis discovered that it had other side effects that we didn't know about. This is a picture of the Adobe Connect orientation evening for Twelfth Night. Um, We've used it for text and pronunciation classes, which is Michael from Tampere uh, talking to a student there from Helsinki about um, pronunciation. And now we get to my favorite slide of the entire evening, which is how the students used it. After Coriolanus, when we weren't going to meet and we'd worked very, very closely together for two weeks, traditionally, as you know, in the arts, uh, People like to go out and have a drink afterwards. Once you've finished your show, people like to go and they have a beer. And then because we were like over a thousand miles apart, we, we couldn't have a beer together. And uh, we thought this was a pity. And later that night on the Facebook group, because we have a Facebook group for every play, you see some students in Coventry, some students in Finland having a beer together. Uh, using their Adobe Connect room. And as the evening went on, people joined in. And this became a very interesting thing. This was The students thought this was very funny, and, and they said, yeah, we've had a beer together, and we've misused the room. But actually, in terms of how we create a system of how we learn, how we rehearse together, this gave us a very vital idea in that there is more. When people make art, when people make work together, there is more to life than just, as I'm sure you know, than just the rehearsal. There's more work happens at a, a conference over the coffee table and in the bar at night than actually happens uh, during conference presentations. And it's these moments where people break away and they have a coffee or they walk to the shop uh, and they talk about their life that change the relationship in the room. And in King Lear, I actually really noticed it when we watched back the footage of rehearsals. For the first two days, the tutors are very much front and center in the room. The tutors are delivering a lot of um, direction to the students. Uh, the last few days, when the students have got to know each other outside the rehearsal room, when they've spent time virt virtually in each other's homes, um, the tutors are very much sitting at the side. They're not in shot a lot of the time. We're waiting to be called into the scene to help solve a problem. So this is vital to making the big space work. This is the space where the artists, where the, where the students can work together and talk together and develop relationships. And, and it's actually very interesting uh, watching the students when they meet for the first time and how there's no real awkwardness between them. They've met, they've spent time together, they've talked about other things, they've learned about each other's interests, they've discussed the scenes, they've developed ideas that they want to try out in the main room, which is fantastic. As a director, I love when an actor comes into me and, and asks me, can they try something? So it became a kind of three-part system that we have. We use Facebook for um, scheduling to share images, to share quick video clips with each other. Uh, we used it very much in King Lear to so that people could see when their faces were lined up, when their hands were lined up, because it's such a it's such a quick way of sending information to each other. And Adobe Connect is for kind of private rehearsals. Members of staff don't really go into Adobe Connect apart from the occasional lecture. These are the student spaces, the actor spaces. Uh, they're, they're not a place for us. And also the students can schedule their own times. They can decide when they want to meet up. Um, very often the scene in the main room is, is concluded by students going, it will take me 15 minutes to get home and then we'll meet up and then we'll, we'll work in the scene. So what we've kind of discovered in, uh, because we've now done three iterations of the project. We did Coriolanus, um, 
King Lear and Twelfth Night, which we did last year in partnership with the University of the Arts Helsinki and uh, some students from the University of Gothenburg in Sweden, um, as well as other very strange offshoots of the project we've um, we've been working on, including an interactive banquet between Coventry and Tampere, a winter gala between Coventry and Tampere, and on one occasion performing uh, King Lear from Hong Kong with um, some actors in Hong Kong and some actors in Tampere, and the actors in Hong Kong were actually outdoors in an outdoor arena with all the noise pollution. There was a waterfall outside. There was some angry wildlife, and there was Hong Kong traffic, and the Finnish actors were inside in the studio at, I think, something like 4 o'clock in the morning. Am I, am I right, Tina? It was incredibly early in the morning uh, for the Finnish actors. Um, but we've discovered that this... The limitations of the technology, which are you cannot touch, you cannot pass an object to each other, but they lead to very creative solutions, stuff that would happen in a, in a normal rehearsal room, uh, which would be very easy. Someone passes an object to another actor, someone touches another actor, and needs, uh, leads to a kind of creative, almost metaphorical way of solving problems by the actors. Uh, this space encourages experimentation. Uh, we've noticed an increased focus in rehearsal, and that may be because it's very frontal acting. There, there are no distractions. It's you and your partners on the screen. Uh, we think the possibly the international aspect of uh, the fact that you're working with technology and you're working internationally seems to accelerate uh, the rehearsal process. Uh, Tina, do you want to add anything on that? Because we're, we're almost, this is the last slide next. Hello? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah? Good. Um, no, not uh, really. I, I think um, if anybody wants to ask something, then <laughs> so. Yeah, we have one. We have one final little clip, which is one of our experiments, which is the one that Delma is familiar with. Uh, we did the opening performance at this year's Network Performing Arts in Miami New World Symphony. Uh, and we didn't do Shakespeare for the first time. Uh, we looked at a scene from Paris, Texas by Sam Shepard. And we have a little one minute, 30 second clip from it. I should say all of this uh, visual material is on our website, um, as well as how we do it. It's, it's, not a, it's not a secret. We're not Kentucky Fried Chicken. We're not keeping our secret blend of herbs and spices. Uh, uh, but all the video material, much lengthier video material of workshops and um, all of the projects we've been working on is all is all on the website, which uh, Delma has a link to, and I and um, I, it, it's the last slide. Uh, so the what you're going to see is a, an actor in Tampere who's in a motion capture suite. So they're they're actually uh, motion captured, and a live musician on another stream acting with a live actor in Miami. So Delma, if you could just Queue up that, and that will be us. Anyway, he started to drink again real bad and stay out late at night to test her. What do you mean, test her? To see if she'd get jealous. Ooh. Yeah. He wanted her to get jealous, but she didn't. She just was worried about him and that got him even madder. Why? Well, because he thought that if she never got jealous of him, then that meant that she didn't really care about him. Jealousy was a sign of her love for him. And then uh, one night, one night she told him she was pregnant. She was about three or four months pregnant, and he didn't even know it. And uh, that changed everything. He stopped drinking. He got a steady job. And he was convinced now that she loved him because she was carrying his child. And he was going to dedicate his life to making a home for him. But um, then something funny started to happen. What? 
He didn't even really notice at first, but uh, she started to change. From the minute the baby was born, she got irritated by everything around her. She got mad at everything. Even the baby seemed to be an injustice to her. And he tried to make her happy. He'd buy her things, take her out to dinner once a week, but nothing seemed to satisfy her. And so for two years, he did everything he could to try to pull them back together to the place that they were when they first met, but he knew it was never gonna work out. So he hit the bottle again, but this time it got mean. This time when he came home late at night drunk, she wasn't worried about him or jealous. She just was enraged. She accused him of holding her captive by making her have the baby. She told him that she dreamed about escaping, that all she dreamed about was escape. She told him how she saw herself running naked down a highway, running across fields, across river beds, always running. And always when she was just about to get away, he'd stop her. She would just get away and he would be there to stop her. He'd appear and he'd be there and he'd stop her somehow. And when she told him these dreams, he knew they were real. He knew she had to be stopped or she'd disappear out of his life forever. So he net a cowbell to her ankle so if she tried to escape and run down to the highway, he'd hear her, but she got wise and she learned to muffle the sound of the cowbell by stuffing a sock in it. Thank you, that's... Uh, so that, that was just Paris, Texas, just to conclude with. So thank you very much, that, that's our presentation, I think. Um... If you have any questions. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. In this room uh, is Lorena Vargas from Quito. Lorena, you can ask directly to the speakers, if you want, and the Spanish room in Anisha Cultural, uh, all connected, uh, can uh, ask to the speaker, and we transfer the traduction. Okay, that's it.
Uh, I was speaking in the Spanish room for the audience in Anita Cultural. Okay, do they have anything they, they want to ask or? Oh, all right. I have a question from Chile in the corner. Uh, can, can you see the question, Tina, as well? Um, I, I mean, to answer that, um, to be very honest, we are really interested in this as a rehearsal tool. So we, we initially, although we have performed with it, we have uh, performed mainly because people have asked us to perform with it. Uh, but we're, um, we're we're very we're, we're live theater people we we really do love the, the liveness of theater and, and actors being together but we have performed with it um i've discovered that it's an uh and we've done two sets of performances we've looked at we king lear has um king lear was rehearsed online and live and then performed live and then we had to perform it online so we had to re-rehearse it and almost reverse engineer, so to kind of go backwards in a way, to perform it live. Because um, when you perform in this, uh, using this technology, you have to think about aesthetically what the look of the piece is. And so you have to look at what images um, look nice. In rehearsals, we don't so much care what images. We sometimes happen across a very beautiful image like uh, the hand, uh, but very often the actors are very free to play with the space and, and to play with the camera and to uh, to experiment with what they can do. But with um, live performances, you find you have to very tie it down. Um, I remember especially with the Miami performance, um, uh, asking Catalina um just to move her head ever so slightly at one point when when she went from being a computer generated character to becoming a real person at the end of the piece uh i had to kind of say can you move your head slightly to the left uh because if you're in that position we can't actually see your your eyes and she just had to move her head so that we could actually um 
see the expression in her eyes. So um, we've had a lot of different situations. We've had a situation where in Miami, we were only performing to one audience. We were performing to the audience in Miami. There, there was no audience in Finland. In Hong Kong, where we were very much working outside our normal comfort zone and weren't using our own technology, again, we were performing for an audience in Hong Kong and there was no audience in Finland. But with the, the banquet we did for the City of Culture, we were performing on both sides which was, do you want to say something about the City of Culture dinner, Tina? Uh, just in terms of how we had to direct that. Can you hear me now? So yeah, I can hear um, you. Yeah, now, yeah. In, yeah. So uh, in 12th night, uh, we had um, audiences sitting in in both sides, and that was actually very helpful because the actors tend to uh, act to the camera. So there is this certain kind of frontality uh, of uh, actions all the time. But when there was audiences, uh, audience sitting. Uh, on the sides, they they had to also address their words there. So the uh, the audience brought some kind of uh, third dimensionality uh, to the situation. So I, I found it actually very interesting. And and uh, when we did this in Helsinki, there were some moments where when the ac actors were actually doing something for the Finnish audience. So for example, a Finnish actor went um, behind uh, the screen, so only the shadow of him was seen. And of course, the commentary people didn't see this. So there were like uh, different kinds of uh, shows for different audiences in, at the same time. Yeah, we also had Miko knock on our screen like this. And of course, he had to create the noise with his foot because the camera doesn't make any noise. So he had to go to make the noise. And which, of course, the Finnish audience didn't see. So the Coventry audience got this actor actually pretending to use the camera to get the attention of the group on his side. But the Finnish audience would have seen somebody miming, knocking a camera while stamping his feet. It's it's interesting, um, and there have been a lot of performances from other companies who use this technology, not in the same way. Uh, there's a really interesting company called Station House Opera who have used this kind of technology to do a really, really beautiful piece uh, where they used vision mixing to have uh, people in Palestine occupy places in England. So they have a live feed in Palestine where they have kind of people in Palestine and they're able to vision mix them on, within the crowd in, in the UK. Um, but latency and speed of interaction isn't a concern. They're very image based. So they're not looking for very rapid responses. Um, we've been doing very dialogue based theater. I mean, Shakespeare is dialogue based. He's, he's always describing where you are, what's happening, what time of day it is. And so the kind of the interaction between the actors, the, the rapid fire between the actors is very important to us. But and then that gives you a whole lot of other sets of problems in terms of performance with audiences and what audiences see and what audiences perceive and, and latency. I hope that answered the question.
Hello, we're not getting any sound from Chile. Can you see the um, question, Tom? I can. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to answer that. Um, yeah. I think, are there any more details? It looked like she kind of had a, a longer explanation. Uh, I guess it is. Uh, it's an open question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, any ideas? Tina? Well, well, maybe what Tom said before. Um, uh, so far, we mainly thought this as a, a method of of rehearse rehearsals more than than performances. Hmm. Um, so. Yeah, it's it, it's an experiment. I mean, it's not it's not mm. experimental theater, but it is an experiment in how we rehearse. In um, a, it, it's a way of kind of crossing cultures and um, working together. I mean, it's become especially important to the UK at the minute for political reasons, because we're undergoing Brexit, where um, a section of the population wants to be separate uh, from the rest of Europe, but the younger population doesn't want to become separate from the rest of Europe. The younger population see themselves as, as global citizens. And, um, uh, and so this really has been based on, on the idea of working together across boundaries, across cultures. Uh, also, because we're universities, it's a course in, uh, so the Finnish students are getting to do some Shakespeare. Uh, the English students are getting to do some Shakespeare um, with a group of students for whom uh, it's not been kind of pummeled into them at school, like English students are. Uh, English students have a, a very odd relationship with Shakespeare. They're, they're not overly fond of Shakespeare because it can be very badly taught at school. It can be uh, taught in a way that actually is very off-putting to students. So they, um, it's really nice for our students to kind of see it fresh through fresh eyes. So they, they work with it, um, with these students, and it's a new piece of theatre. Um, I mean, certainly there are other places we want to take this in the future. Um, again, I, I would regard as we're, we're really only starting in this. I know I said we're four years into this, and you would think that makes us some kind of experts in this field, but we we really feel like novices because we're we're really trying to do something new all the time. Uh, we haven't really repeated any of our workshop exercises very much. I mean, we. 
I mean, we had dance, but then we didn't do dance the next year. We did yoga. Uh, we did some martial arts work. We, we've had some vocal work. We've had some singing. We've had some voice work. Um, with Twelfth Night, we looked at a comedy for a change. So we looked at something that was very romantic, and we looked at something that was funny. Um, the challenge of doing it between Hong Kong and Finland was the distance, which led to kind of increased delay and latency. How, how would we cope with that? Um, we're going to be doing a project with America, with Purdue University next June, uh, which is Bertolt Brecht's The Life of Galileo, and we're going to be working with... Uh, Purdue University has produced more astronauts than any other U.S. university. So Neil Armstrong went to Purdue, um, Buzz Aldrin went to Purdue, and they've got a department of astronomics and astrometrics. So we're, we're linking up with the department of astronomics and astrometrics to look at Brecht's Life of Galileo, but also to look at the science behind it. Um, so there's always these new challenges in it. Um, in terms of performance, we've never really done a full performance with it. We've always um, done sort of little sample performances, uh, at most lasting 20 minutes. Um, and this is something that maybe somewhere down the road, uh, if we find the right material, if we find uh, a piece of work that really works within the form and, and, and will be interesting and new things can be revealed through working this way. Um, I think the worst thing that could happen would be to treat it as a gimmick, would be to say to people, um, come and see the play, the actors are a thousand miles apart, unless there was a reason for that, unless there was a kind of aesthetic reason, unless that added something to the piece of work you were making, I think it would be I, I, almost like a gimmick for gimmick's sake. Uh, in terms of <coughs> rehearsal for us, it's it's a, it's a necessity, not really a gimmick in that um, we get to work together without spending lots of money uh, and trying to get 20 actors on a plane and put 20 actors in an hotel and, put, and, and feed 20 actors. And uh, so we do go over, but we go over for very short, periods of time where we just uh, refine the work so um and there are other people who use this for performance there is um oh i've forgotten his name in bisco uh, studio bisco who uh, is very much performance based and not rehearsal based we are very much rehearsal and process based and view the kind of rehearsal process as an experiment and the performance to a way is, is the public face of the experiment. So the, the, the performances are a way of showing people what we've been experimenting with. It's a very vague answer. I'm sorry. I hope that, I hope that kind of answered your question. <laughs> I'm not sure if it did, though. I mean, I should say, Delma, if, if you give people, I'd be very happy to chat by email if people want to send stuff and ask stuff via email in the future. We'd be very, very happy to, to share stuff and, and kind of uh, maybe discuss in, in more depth. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. The intention with this online session is just only the, the first step in the communication yeah. and exchange and generate synergies. Mm. synergies. Yeah. So anybody else got anything they want to Quite odd, I can hear a clock ticking in the background. <laughs> it's actually in this room where I am. <laughs> is, it, is it in your room? <laughs> it's quite ominous. <laughs> Has Delma 
frozen on her screen. I've lost sound um, again, Tina. Okay. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I need to go quite soon because this pace okay, I'm in mean, yes. is there are it's going people to coming here. So yes. Okay. So, I'll just see if, if, if Delma comes back and we can say good night to everyone. Because I'm leaning forward and my back's quite sore as well. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> Maybe we can um, write a message to people. Yeah. Hang on, someone new has appeared in a box. Oh no, it's me again. I don't know. It, this is just... Um... People are vanishing. I think everybody's going. So, um, yeah, I think we'll say thank you very much. I'll I'll send something. Yes, sorry because I That's okay. I have a, a a technical problem. Yes. No problem. Uh, uh, we were just going to call it a night, if that's okay. And I'm just going to. Uh, any... Yes, yeah, okay. so if uh, we are happy to answer questions later um, by uh, email uh, or if yes, you, if we you share want to the information later. with uh, the, particip yeah. the participation <laughs> and with the institution and with yeah. the audience connected. Um, it's no problem, and we can uh, organize a, a group uh, for other event and for other training. If you are agree, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we should go. I should say to Tina <laughs> and other business while I have you here. I may yes. have really odd. I may have really odd news for you next Friday. Did you get the email from Reimagine Education? Uh, I haven't because I've been really busy. I haven't really read. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll okay. get back to you with that later. On yes. Friday. So we, it, we're not nominated yet. On Friday, they announced the nominations. As you know, okay. we've gone for the big one this year. Okay. But maybe we should. Um, we can talk this maybe later uh, in yeah, Adobe just or be, somewhere. Yeah, but watch this space some ne okay. next Friday. <laughs> we'll hear something either way, good or bad or whatever. I'm not even sure if anything would be good or okay. bad at this point anymore. Uh, uh, <laughs> so enjoy the rest of the concert. Your project have a lot of awards. Uh, <laughs> we just we have very empty shelves. Uh, <laughs> so. In coffee, well, anyway. it's a way of getting attention of my bosses. So, <laughs> good night. So, anyway, thank, thank you, you for for uh, inviting us. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tina. Thank you so much, Tom. And probably uh, in next week uh, we have uh, more news. Uh, regarding next okay. step uh, with our activities in theatre and telepresence. Okay. Lovely. Thank you very Thank much, you. Delma. Again, Thank a pleasure you. seeing you. Bye -bye. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for all Bye -bye. connected. Greetings for, for Chile. <laughs> and Thank greetings you. from Coventry. <laughs> and... Actually, from Helsinki. I'm in Helsinki now. <laughs> bye bye. Ecuador and Uruguay connected. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Kudi, for your help and support in this activity. And Rao.
Academic Network in Uruguay. Thank you so much.